Welcome dear students. Today our topic of discussion is rise of communal politics in South Asia. In this lecture we will discuss about discourses on communal politics, rise of religious nationalism and communalization of politics, communalism in post colonial South Asia and caste and communalism. South Asia is a region with rich religious, cultural, linguistic and ethnic diversity. Once this diversity was a source of engagement and dialogue between people of different communities is now a source of communal politics in South Asia. Communalism has become now an important feature of South Asian politics. Unlike in western world where it is understood as the theory and system of government in which autonomous local communities are loosely in federation. Communalism in modern South Asia has come to acquire the meaning of antagonism and conflict which may turn violent between the people of different religions and cultures. It has attained the form of an ideology on which communal politics is based. In Bipin Chandra's view, communalism is an ideology that is a belief system or an interrelated set of assumptions through which politics or society is viewed. According to Dikshit Prabha, communalism is a political doctrine which makes use of religio-cultural differences to achieve political ends. When on the basis of religio-cultural differences, a community initiates political demands deliberately, then communal awareness turns into communalism. Some scholars of subaltern historiography view communalism as an outcome of modern colonial knowledge. Gyanendra Pandey, who asserts that communal consciousness is constructed in a specific manner by undermining the heterogeneity of a community and poisting broadest possible solidarity against the group defined as the other. In subaltern discourse, communalism is produced by reconstructing the intercommunity relationship through the process of homogenization and essentialization. Now, let us talk about growth of communalism in South Asia. There is a great deal of scholarship over the development and growth of communalism in South Asia. It can be discussed under some headings. Colonial discourse. The colonial discourse on the communalism in South Asia is that it developed with the invasion of Muslims. The establishment of Muslim political power in South Asia gave rise to the power struggle between the elite factions of Muslims and Hindus due to their competing and conflicting political and economic interests. C. A. Bailey argues that it is these Hindu and Muslim elites who entangled their economic and political rivalries with religiosity, which led to the outbreaks of episodes of communal violence in India. British civil servant Hugh Macpherson in his work, Origin and Growth of Communal Antagonism states that communalism is pre-colonial problem of India and has its roots in the Muslim invasion. He believes that Hindu-Muslim antagonism is organic to social structure of Indian society. Louis Dumont holds that it is the religiosity of pre-colonial Hinduism and Islam which configured itself as communal in the wake of national movement. Now let us talk about nationalist discourse. The nationalist school holds that the roots of communalism lay in the British colonialism. The British policy of divide and rule was aimed at to weaken the nationalist struggle and prevent the people of different communities to unite against them. It is this policy, nationalists believe, which thwarted communal harmony between Muslims and Hindus and gave rise to the communal politics and religious nationalism. Bipin Chandra 
in his book Communalism in Modern India 1984 emphasizes that communalism is modern phenomenon which could not have existed before colonialism for the simple reason that there was no mass politics in pre-colonial India. The introduction of the census in 1871 by the British is held responsible for the solidification of various religious and caste identities. It encouraged people to organize around their own identities and groups. It is also argued that the introduction of communal policies like separate electorate for minorities on the basis of religion widened the communal divide and turned communal identities into political identities. Now, let us talk about a rise of religious nationalism and communalization of politics. Communalization of politics in South Asia can be traced back to the foundation of RSS in 1925, which profoundly shaped the society and politics of Indian subcontinent. The British historiography that divided the Indian history into three different periods, Hindu, Muslim and British. It reduced the layered reality and heterogeneous nature of community into uniform and homogeneous fiction. This periodization of historical time on the lines of religious identity was responsible for the growth of communal politics. The partition of Bengal in 1905 and the separate electorates for religious minorities in 1909 were early steps in transforming religious identity into political identities. These two events faced a protest from Hindu majority and saw a growing distrust between Muslims and Hindus that continued during the nationalist struggle. During this period, India also witnessed many Hindu and Muslim revivalist movements. While Hindu revivalist movements stressed on the Hindu character of India and the Muslim movements emphasized on the distinct character of the Muslims as a separate nation. Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, who had been president of Hindu Mahasabha, published a book, Hindutva, who is a Hindu in 1923, in which he articulated the political basis and vision of Hindu nationalism in detail. He defined Hindu as one who considers India to be Matrabhumi, meaning motherland, Pitrabhumi, meaning fatherland, and Punyabhumi, meaning holy land. This definition excluded Muslims and Christians, whom Savarkar considered intruders and invaders, as their holy lands, the origin of their faith, lay outside India. The founder of RSS, K. B. Hedgwar, was greatly influenced by Savarkar's ideas and promoted this ideology defining India as a Hindu nation and arguing that only Hindus were the owners of land. Others, especially Muslims and Christians, may live in India, but only at the sufferance of the Hindus and as second class citizens. M. S. Golwalkar, who headed RSS after K. B. Hedgwar, strengthened the organization and pledged to achieve freedom through defending religion and culture. His philosophy of RSS can be understood from his quote in Ramachandra Goha's book, India after Gandhi, the history of world's largest democracy. He says, the non-Hindu people of Hindustan must either adopt Hindu culture and languages, must learn and respect and hold in reverence the Hindu religion, must entertain no idea but of those of glorification of the Hindu race and culture. In a word, they must cease to be foreigners or may stay in the country, wholly subordinate to the Hindu nation, claiming nothing, deserving no privileges, far less any preferential treatment, not even citizenship rights. 
on the other hand almost two decades later muslim leader muhammad ali jinnah propounded a political thesis similar to savarkar's that muslims form a separate nation and ultimately it was this assertion of essential difference and separation between muslims and hindus as communities that led to the tragedy of partition the british colonization of india came largely at the expense of muslim rule the loss of political power and the growth of hindu revivalist movements like brahmo samaj and arya samaj with projected ideologies and activities created suspicion and anxiety among muslims about their future dr muhammad iqbal was the first muslim leader who understood the dilemma of the indian muslims who were caught in between the power of the raj and its ideas and the hindu majority that was not ready to accept them as an equal community muhammad iqbal considered the communal problem between hindus and muslims as an international issue because for him the communal groups were nations in their own rights he thought that issues between hindus and muslim communities could only be settled on an reciprocal basis through giving full respect to the customs laws religious and social institutions of each other's communities that's why instead of any power sharing formula based on the separate electorates in a unified central legislative he preferred a federal structure in which a community had a right to free development according to its own ideals like muhammad iqbal ali muhammad jinnah started his political struggle as an ardent supporter of indian nationalism he disagreed with the shimla deputation of separate electorate for the muslims on the contrary he wanted to unify both the communities to have a joint struggle for home rule self government and inc refused to accept his demands and failure of negotiations between all india muslim league and inc which eventually led to his demand for separate country for muslims now let's talk about communalism in post colonial south asia the exploitation of religious diversity for political motives by british bred communalism in south asia and damaged its faith based harmony irreversibly that even after british colonization came to an end communalism has attained a place of permanence in the politics of post colonial south asian politics although india adopted secular and democratic constitution to ensure equal rights and representation of all citizens but in case of minorities they have been given certain freedom in the form of personal law but such personal laws are seen by indian nationalists like the rss as unfair and discriminatory against the hindu majority while minorities deem this attitude as the threat to their communities over a period of time resentment against the personal law and demand for uniform civil code by indian nationalists grew and became a source of constant conflict between majority community and minority community consequently community groups and leaders started bargaining for their own communities and compete for power and resources to ensure well being of their own communities politicians like british colonialists try to turn these communities into vote banks and exploit these differences for their political motives which led to the communalization of politics in india and sometimes resulted in riots and pogroms since independence india is trying to pursue the idea of nation building based on the secular and democratic principles but 70 years of history is dotted with violent communal conflicts pakistan on the other hand 
affirmed the role of Islamic provisions in its constitution to enable it to adhere to the teachings of Quran and Sunnah. The injection of Islam into the constitution of the state made sure that the Hindus and Christians remain marginalized in the Pakistani politics and are treated effectively as second class citizens. The continued political instability and the military rule for a long period of time did not allow a space to envision a fully democratic Pakistan. Both civilian rulers and military dictators alike used Islam as a tool to legitimize their rule and mobilize people in their favor. The gradual process of Islamization reached its peak during the reign of military dictator Ziaul Haq, who bought many Islamic laws that were not only discriminatory against non-Muslims, but also plunged the country into a deep sectarian crisis. Zia's project of Islamization ingrained religious fundamentalism deep into the crevices of the different sectors of Pakistani society and polity, law, education, media, etc. After its liberation in 1971, Bangladesh with Muslim majority tried to build a nation around linguistic, geographical and cultural unity. It adopted a secular democratic constitution and used the term Bangladeshi instead of Bengali to extend its citizenship to all its non-Bengali ethnic groups in the country. However, soon Bangladeshi politics witnessed the emergence of growing religiosity and Islam was adopted as a state religion. The increasing religiosity of public sphere pushed successive regimes to make compromises in politics and tinkering with the constitution. The declaration of Islam as state religion emboldened communal forces and subsequent politicization of religion has stalked violent communal tensions in the Bangladesh. Now, let us talk about caste and communalism. Scholars have explored the relationship between communalism and mode of politics and the persistent question of caste in the Indian society. Dilip Menon in his book, The Blindness of Insight has tried to explore the relationship between caste and communalism. He argues that we should think the issues of caste and communalism in tandem. Hindu society is hierarchical in structure and divides people along the lines of occupation. He argues that Hinduism as a social system is deeply and structurally inegalitarian and engenders great brutality and structural violence towards the condemned into the lower castes of the Varnashrama. The violence internal to the Hinduism against internal other is according to Menon projected onto the external other that is the Muslim. The upshot of the perverse logic of caste is that the internal other is deployed as the agent on ground of violence and brutalization of the external other. South Asia is a multi-religious, multi-ethnic and multilinguistic region. After the end of colonial rule, some countries in the region adopted democratic and secular constitution to accommodate the diversity and pluralism of the countries. It was also understood as the best antidote to the problem of communalism. But despite adopting secularism and democracy, it proved incapable of warding off communalization of politics and society in South Asia. T. N. Madan argues that secularism is not practically possible in South Asia as it is unsuitable as majority of the people in the region are adherents of some religious faith. While other scholars believe that it is the absence of true secularism in its attendant components like democracy that makes the resurgence of communalism possible. The institutional weakness and growing socio-economic inequities in the society 
are often exploited by politicians for political purposes. The societies that are ravaged by socio-economic inequalities when ignored by status become the fertile ground for the growth of fundamentalism and communalism. Right-wing politicians and religious extremists often project minorities as other, threat to majority and cause of socio-economic problems and mobilize majorities against minorities. Bhagat Singh argued that communalism is as big an enemy of the Indian people as the colonialism. He further argued that communalism creates a smoke screen which obfuscates real issues from the people. The way forward to overcome communalism therefore is to bring the real issues of deeper social transformation that touch people's lives on the forefront of the political agenda. In a hyper-polarized environment, when communal identities become entrenched and communities become deeply intolerant of differences in customs, cuisine, dress or mode of worship, there is a high probability of aggression and violence to be deployed against minorities in order to crush them. The rise of anti-Hindu violence in Pakistan and Bangladesh on the one hand and the rise of anti-Muslim violence in India on the other hand has the potential to result in the vicious cycle of intercommunal violence with each group feeding off the other. It is neither possible nor desirable to eliminate differences. Now instead of making differences a cause of discord and tension between the people, it needs to be accepted, tolerated and celebrated which can only be possible by having strong institutions that will keep check on the communal forces and facilitate socio-economic well-being and inter-community dialogue of people. Dear students, with this I am signing off from today's lecture. Hope you have understood it well. Thanks for watching it.